the meeting's live. Okay, thanks very much. So welcome to this cabinet panel on the environment meeting that's been conducted with officers and members at various locations, communicating audio and video and online. Uh, there's also an opportunity for the public and the press to listen and view the proceedings. Uh, and we have some contributors from various organisations here to provide us with, with input and feedback. Uh, before the meeting starts, I'd like to invite uh, Penny Copestate to take a roll call to confirm that everyone who needs to be here is here. Penny. Um, when your name's called, could you please indicate your attendance so that we can confirm that required members, officers and registered speakers are present and can be heard? Uh, Councillor Jarvis, <laughs> well, we know you can be. Uh, Councillor Allen? Here. Councillor Bryant? Here. Councillor Davis? Here. Councillor Dingley? Here. Councillor Rashiro Shaka? Present. Councillor Stainer? Dania, yeah, I'm here. Dania, I'm not sure I'm actually required to be here, but um, I'm oh, here okay. anyway. So. Okay. <laughs> uh, Ruben Ayabu? Present. Alice Sims? Here. Chloe Hipwood? Present. Uh, yeah. Louise Overington. Yep, here. Chris Lee. Yep, here. John, John Webb. Here. Yeah. Diane Ketcher. Here. Yeah. yeah. And Christine Watson. Yeah. Okay, I think that's everyone that I have on my list. Okay, thanks very much. Um, apologies for absence. Uh, I think we have apologies from Keith Hoskins and Gerald Morris. Are there any other apologies? No. Okay, minutes of the last meeting of the panel, which was held on the 7th of September. Are we happy to agree with those? Yep, everyone happy with that? Agree with those then? Um, so I'd like to welcome you all. Um, the uh, members of the public and the speakers, thanks for coming along this evening. Um, in accordance with the Council's normally po normal policy, this meeting is being recorded, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, as well as filmed. Uh, the audio recordings are on ModGov and the uh, video recording you can see on the NHPC YouTube channel. Uh, members of the panel are reminded that if you have any declarations of interest to make, uh, you should, um, well, you see the detailed reminders that set out on the agenda uh, and arrange those at the appropriate time and, and the, I guess probably fairly unlikely if that are uh, Other business, there isn't any, uh, which moves us on to item six, which is the work programme and action tractor. Uh, Ruben. Thank you, Chair. Um, we've got quite a packed agenda, so I'm going to uh, aim to whiz through the information note and to attach papers fairly quickly. Uh, I draw your attention to 2.2 of the information note, which gives you an update on the work the corporate policy team have been involved in. We've been working very closely with the Hertfordshire Climate Change and Sustainability Partnership. Uh, we took part in a COP event on the 3rd of November, which officially launched all of the action plans, which are biodiversity, transport, carbon and water. Um, we are leading on biodiversity and the biodiversity baseline and that those meetings are progressing to work out, as it says there, the data hierarchy. So what data we need to use to work out what a parcel land has in terms of biodiversity. Uh, we recently had a paper around solar bulk purchase for the county and districts. That paper is going to come to the partnership in January, so we'll have some more details for you then. We have also been involved in the behaviour change subgroup. You'll re remember that we had a um, well, Ludo from the behavioural unit at the county who gave the presentation and we're working together to, to develop uh, some strategies around that. We publish our monthly eco actions and unsurprisingly the November one and December one will cover Christmas related actions. And you'll see that attached to one of the papers is the review of the carbon footprint calculator. Do you remember Annie Sander? There was a presentation about the Cambridge one. 
So we went away as an action for us to look at different calculators that staff, councillors, public could use. We looked at 15. We've, we've listed three there, the WWF calculator, the resurgent calculator and the Cambridge Carbon Footprint calculator. Each have a different level of um, in-depthness or user-friendliness. Uh, we will put them on our social media pages, so please have a look and I'll circulate the, the links to those paper, those links, those calculators there. I'll then move into the action tracker. Um, there's a number of actions there on hold at the moment. We've there, you'll be aware that there's a consultation on national waste strategy. Once those outcomes have come out and then we see what actions we have for local authorities, we can update those. But as well of an update for some of those, run through this very quickly, mostly around uh, community composting. We, you may be aware that we have a Waste Warriors Facebook page and forum for engagement and sharing information between Waste Warriors. We have ma a master composting scheme, which you can sign up to. We also have an adopt an area for litter picking and Avasta have made available 100 litter picking packs. And we also have community composting workshops. And that's what I want to say. Ah, also in regards to the bins, we had something around the bins and gum, instewing, installing gum, chewing gum bins. Um, you will be aware that all the bins have now been adapted in all the town centres to collect cigarettes and gum. So I'm proposing we remove that one. And as a last thought, uh, we talked about the tree giveaway. The latest number around expressions of interest is over a thousand. Uh, the Green Space team are going to approach the bids to um, have a stall at their marketplaces so they can draw up some more interest there and I'll try and update you when I can uh, at later meetings. And that's all I have to say for today. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Raven. Any questions or comments for Raven? Uh, Diane. Yeah. Could I ask um, Ruben a little bit more about the um, two things there, the composting workshops and the adopt uh, an area for litter picking. How are those two going? And I haven't seen anything on social media about either of those. Where would I find out more information? We've certainly got some information on our external website and I can send you the links directly. Um, I don't know if that Louise or Chloe want to come in yeah, well. so, um, well, as you know, Diane, uh, Rob is facilitating um, a lot of the talks at the moment, and he is advertising any which are available to North Hearts residents and the like, um, so in terms of talks, in terms of adopt an area. I don't know the exact numbers, but I want to say 60-ish, and I'm looking for Louise to sort of vaguely nod at me, um, to say we've got had about 60 sign-ups, but we've also had a number of parish councils take up um our litter picking packs which we've offered them so um you know that we're, we're conscious that not everybody who uh, is litter picking out there as volunteers is signed up to our adoption area um but we have seen you know a positive uh, take up of that and it's something that we from time to time are promoting but obviously at the moment we're all oh, i say at the moment in recent weeks we've been focusing a lot on um food waste around halloween and, and things like that and so we're we're on seasonal messages now on the run up to christmas of course as well but we'll talk a lot about that in in our presentation coming up okay, okay. so that's on the website yeah yeah mm -hmm. thanks very much thank you i, I think just oh, i don't see my hands and so just two comments i think um i'm particularly pleased that we're seeing some movement on a on a county-wide a solar bulk purchase scheme uh that's something that i think is is uh we promoted to hcsp and it looks like it's it quite likely to happen on a county-wide basis uh and it's a way that will help a section of the community to, to do something really effective in terms of uh, in, in terms of installing solar pv and reducing their own carbon footprint uh, it's clearly not going to help everybody but it will help a section of the community and i think in terms of the trees um i think there's there's a, a thousand expressions of interest but i understand that those expressions of interest account for <coughs> more than ten thousand trees potentially <coughs> which is the number we've got we just we've got some people who've got very considerable amounts of space and i think the the task over the next over the coming weeks uh, now the trees are actually available 
is to see how thinly we can spread them since I'd much prefer we gave one tree to 10,000 people than a than, uh, thousand trees to 10 people. We're not going to do either of those things, but, uh, but I think uh, there's still, there's lots of demand for the trees. We're just trying to make sure that they get distributed as widely as possible. Christine, you want to say something? Yes, please. It may be completely irrelevant here, but can I ask uh, what happens to the uh, all the leaves which are collected by council uh, green space people, presumably, do they go to composting or what happens to those? Could, could they be given to allotment uh, allotmenters, you know, for composting in their allotments? I think that's a question we need to take away in terms of the green space ones. I don't know if, if, if Clary or Louise knows the answer in terms of the ones that swept off the street. In terms of the green spaces, uh, it is composted. Um, uh, I obviously don't know the specific details of that, but I do know it's composted. Um, in terms of uh, the streets, it goes for uh, sort of secondary processing and then is composted after that once we can ensure that, you know, any uh, gravel and, um, you know, excess litter, et cetera, is taken out of it. So um, the processes are in place to, to get that done. In terms of whether or not it could be provided to local allotments, obviously that, that is a logistics and a, and a sort of resources um, question, which um, we'll need to go back to someone like Andrew um, to, to have a conversation. Thank you. Uh, Amy. Um, so just as somebody on, on the back of that, just as somebody who actually has an allotment, um, I have more than enough than I could possibly need to fill my compost bins for composting without the need for more leaves, although leaf mould is a fantastic thing on its own to be able to sort out. And I encourage everyone to go out and rake up as much as possible before the big hoover comes along. Um, we, we've got a lot and we get a lot of grass cuttings from residents nearby as well who um, sort of bring it to us to the car park if we want it or not. But it's always made, made use of. So as, an, as someone at an allotment, I can't speak to everybody, but We've already got a lot, and if it's going for composting anyway, or it can be turned into leaf mould by people raking it up themselves, then I, I, I think, it, although I think you might be biased, but you know, portfolio holder. Okay, all right. So there's, uh, actually, we're doing a bit, a bit better in terms of what we do with leaves selected than I thought we were. So it sounds like the right kind of thing happening there. Okay, let's move on then. So next we have a presentation on waste and recycling. And Chloe and Louise, I believe you're doing that together. So Chloe, do you want to kick off? Lovely, I believe Louise is gonna share our presentation. Great, so um, thank you again to everybody for, for having us uh, here again to come talk to you about um, our services and, and particularly the, the communications work that we're, we're going on. Um, so just to introduce, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, uh, I'm Chloe Hipford. I am the Shared Service Manager for East and North Hearts District Council um, and have been working prior to that, um, obviously directly for, for North Hearts Council before the, the Shared Service was formed. Um, and Louise Overington is our Service Delivery and Development Manager who is responsible for our communications plan, among a million other things. So thank you. I could have next slide, please. So uh, I'm going to quickly talk about um, our, what we're doing currently to, to work towards net zero for, for the council's climate emergency aspirations. I'll touch on food waste, which um, some of you will remember I talked about um, the last time I was invited here. Louise is going to run through our 21, 22 campaigns that we've been working on. Um, and then we'll touch on the waste warriors, which has already been mentioned how you can help as individuals, and then obviously what we've got planned coming up and, and into next year. Uh, thanks, next slide. So um, one of the things that we have been doing is developing behind the scenes a carbon management plan. We are really conscious that as a service we have, um, you know, one of, we're one of the largest con contributors to um, the council's own carbon emissions. Um, and obviously when we take into consideration some of the other assets that are attached to that, that like the depots and things, you know, it, it's something that we need to uh, take a quite holistic approach um, to, what, to what we're looking at. So um, one of the things we have started to do is we've installed new um, 
analytics on our refuse trucks so that we can look at driver behavior telematics um, because we know that good driver behavior has a massive impact on the amount of fuel used and, and therefore um, you know the, the carbon impacts just immediately you know that's something that we know we can change now um, so that's something that's work, being worked on with Abasa and they are currently um, exploring opportunities uh, for a driver bonus scheme for example that, that can be linked to that. Um, we've of course started our investigations into fleet decarbonisation options um, and some of you will be aware that we had a, an electric vehicles demonstration uh, at the Buntingford depot um, a few weeks ago where we had the opportunity to run the Dennis Eagle e-collect fully electric RCV for a week um, in a trial to see how it operated on our roads in our rural areas um, and see you know how good it was now and, and what it might be able to provide for us in the future. Um, we also had a demonstration from a company called Boshang, who you're probably less familiar with, um, but they do electric sweepers. So um, this is an example of an electric sweeper and there's, there's somebody in this room who got to drive it. Um, I'm quite jealous. Um, but it was a really good opportunity for our contractor staff, um, obviously officers in the council, to have a look at what the current technology looks like in terms of electrification. We are, of course, um, going to be exploring all sorts of de decarbonisation options when it comes to the fleet. Um, but at the moment, you know, technology around, say, for example, hydrogen isn't isn't quite ready um, in this area, particularly to, to support that. But we are we're mindful of our contractual requirements in, in terms of fleet replacements. Um, and so we, we are proactively looking to make some decisions for 2025 when we have our contract extension. Uh, you know, slash breakpoint um, to give us, you know, uh, a sort of base position to lead us into our 2030, um, you know, plan, as it were. Um, we, of course, have been looking at the depots uh, in particular at the moment. We're working with East Hearts Council on what vehicle charging solutions we might be able to put in at the Buntingford depot for vans that would um, enable our uh, client team fleet. So um, at the moment, we, you know, our contract officers have client vehicles um, that would enable them to go electric at the moment um, we we don't spend enough time over at Letchworth to be able to charge up at, uh, at the multi-story or, or or that facility so obviously we need something at the depot um, and of course we're developing proposals for the depots in general looking at uh, things like you know whether the roof can support solar panels um, we've just had all of the lighting uh, changed at um, Bunting, uh, Buntingford depot to be LED um, which is obviously a project that's being spearheaded by East Hearts um, property services team. But, you know, it's relevant here to North Hearts being a shared service and something that, you know, as we look towards our Northern Transfer Station potentially and, and the potential future depot um, that we are looking to provide in North Hearts, those are key conversations we're having now with consultants about what level of um, renewable energy we can provide on site, you know, whether we can have solar panels, whether we can provide, um, you know, even potentially a substation to, to charge electric vehicles. Um, but obviously, you know, we are looking at the te technology um, with the help of consultants at the moment, because we know that it, our solution might not be wholly electric. The technology is not quite there with everything yet. Um, and so we want to make sure that when we make our decisions about how to change our fleet and when to change our fleet, um, that, that we are, you know, using, uh, utilising the, the best technology that's out there at the time. Uh, next slide, please. So coming back to food waste, um, for any of you who um, avidly follow our social media, you know, we focused quite a bit on food waste, particularly at the beginning of this year. Um, and it still unfortunately accounts for about a third of the waste in our residual waste bin, despite the fact that we have a separate weekly food waste collection. We're, of course, really con uh, conscious that disruption as a consequence of COVID um, and things like that has impacted on participation in the service. So we will continue to be proactive and, and um, you know, put out key messages about food waste, um, which Louise will talk a little bit more about shortly. Um, and, and some of the future projects um, are in that regard. Um, we've tried to have quite a climate focused social media link with food waste because it is um, one of the major contributors uh, worldwide to greenhouse gases. Um, the, the expectation being that you could 
um, I think it saves something like 11% of greenhouse gases by cutting food waste alone. Um, and so, you know, really significant impacts can be made um, by encouraging our residents to think a little more about their avoidable food waste. Um, and that's something that we've uh, worked on with um, obviously the Master Composter Programme, which again, I'll talk about in a second. Um, We've obviously done a food waste pledge. Some of you all know about that already. And we've had some positive encouragement now that we're getting out and about a bit more um, with provision of liners at our road shows and events and things like that. And as I mentioned, there is gonna be a new study and a trial that's going on across Hertfordshire to look at uh, ways that we can engage with, with residents across Hertfordshire. Uh, we're gonna use a, a, a test district with a trial uh, with a control district to see how much influence our new campaign messages um, have on reducing avoidable food waste next slide please so i'm going to hand over now to louise she's going to talk a little bit about our 21 22 campaigns good evening everybody um so just going to summarise some of the campaigns that we had in 21-22. Um, apologies in advance, there are some of the subjects I get a little bit excited about, so I will try and keep it as succinct as possible, but I might ramble with some of the ones that I really enjoyed. Um, so as some of you may be aware, we appointed a waste awareness officer back in January. Um, obviously at that point in time, face-to-face -face interaction was somewhat limited, but it did mean that we were able to, to pad out our communications plan with all of those things that we have wanted to do for a small, for, for a period of time that we've not had the opportunity to do. So we were able to capitalise on um, obviously Halloween more recently, but Easter, um, spring, so all of those times of year where people seem to generate more waste um, and have more opportunities to recycle, compost or even reuse. Um, we also were able to um, take part in some of the um, national campaigns, so some of the um, bigger picture things that we could be a part of in, in North Hearts, either with our own campaign material or sharing some of the existing campaign material. Um, so it's just a few examples of um, some of our social media there. Um, next slide, please. So one of the bigger campaigns was the uh, Food Waste Prevention Week, which um, was at the beginning of March. National campaign, which saw uh, 135 major companies take part. Um, one of them I know was Baxter's, so who makes soup and chutneys, because I was interested in a competition that they were running as part of the week. Um, the, the campaign was fronted by Nadia Hussein, who was one of the um, Bake Off winners, just to try and get a lot more social media attention behind the, the pledge. Apparently, uh, half a billion opportunities were, were found within that week for people to come across social media, including us, North Arts and East Arts. We were partners in that event as well. Um, so here are some of the posts that we put out in support of that. So the imaging of the um, RAP and the climate change was um, from RAP and that actually featured on some of our recycling refuse vehicles as well. So there were opportunities to see that in the district. Um, Another one there was the uh, North Hearts pledge that Chloe touched on. So we also encourage North Hearts residents to sign up to pledge to um, do things like meal planning. Um, just show you this quickly. I bought props. So once upon a time, we used to give out meal planners when we have face to face, just to encourage people to think about what it is that they're, they're planning when they're, they're having the meals, encouraging people to use their caddies and also pledging to check the temperature of their fridges which um, obviously can affect how quickly food waste can spoil. Um, the food waste pledge is obviously something that we can run again year after year to get new signups. I think in the end, I've got um, 48 residents signed up within that food waste prevention week. Um, so that's obviously an opportunity for us to run that campaign again and get those, those numbers up. So lots of social media, um, including our own. And it was a very exciting time for us because obviously, Food waste prevention is, is just as important as food waste capture for us. Um, RAP are planning to run the campaign again, and they're also looking to run it in an even bigger way. So we're hopeful that we can start planning fairly soon and know what that is. RAP notoriously have embargoes on a lot of their information. So we try and get it out to partners um, as soon as we're able to release it. Um, but sometimes that is embargoed sometimes until the week before. So our, our 
vehicle branding, for example, we managed to get out mid that week just because of the, the time frame that the release was, was happening. Um, next slide, please. So some of the other campaigns that um, some of you are probably more than aware of, so Plastic Free July, that was an opportunity for us to encourage people to make small changes to things that they did. So uh, reusable shopping bags, for example. I can't imagine anyone now would be caught seeing drinking out of a plastic straw, um, reusable cups and, and that sort of thing. Obviously an opportunity for us to promote um, some of the plastic free initiatives that partners are doing as well. Um, because there's some great work being done in the district that we can also try and share with our residents. Cruise newsletters were something new this year, so our opportunity to engage with crews, let them know some of the campaigns that we were doing. Obviously, that might impact their day-to-day their -day if we're promoting a particular material, um, and it gives them an opportunity if they are approached by residents, which obviously we were discouraging during COVID, but if they are approached by residents, they've got information on some of the seasonal and national campaigns as well. National Refill Day. Um, I suspect most of you know what refill is, but for anyone who doesn't, it's um, encouraging people to take reusable water bottles out and about and going into establishments such as cafes or, or pubs and being able to get those bottles refilled. Um, so that's a national campaign um, that we've been a part of, obviously, again, affected by COVID, but we've been told that refill are very keen to have a big impact next year. And they've approached Waste Aware, the, the Hearts Waste um, Partnership, and offered to send in a representative to come talk to us so we can get involved in promoting that with them. So that's something um, that we're looking forward to next year. The promotion of real nappies is um, something we do alongside our partners um, in Waste Aware, Hearts Waste Partnership. So the reusable nappy programme changed at the um, end of last year, beginning of this year. So... Previously, it was that we would give residents, prospectus, prospectus residents, um, a kit um, at no cost to them. So they would have these things delivered to them and have different nappies in there that they would then go and use to um, avoid the disposable ones. It was then found you, through surveys that this wouldn't be the best approach for parents who maybe were restricted in what they wanted to choose. And obviously, there was a cost attached to that. So the programme was um, reinvigorated this year with lots of different companies now on board offering multiple discounts to um, residents interested in trying real nappies for the first time. As an extension of that, we are also looking to extend and promote nappy libraries, which then gives residents the opportunity to try before they buy because there, there are lots of different um, nappy options out there. And it just means that people aren't committing their money to something that might not work for them without, without being sure that that's what they want to do. So that's going to be an extension of that service. Also capturing textiles, another, um, another victim of, of COVID there, unfortunately, in that we were not promoting our textile service because of the manual handling by crews. However, now that that risk has diminished, we are going to be issuing a lot more information about our own textile collection service, as well as encouraging people to reuse and donate to charity shops as well. Um, and just to say, there's a note there to say that we do work in Hearts Waste Partnership um, for a lot of the initiatives. So I was at Waste Aware this morning. So a lot of the things that um, I was talk about now, we're actually out of that meeting this morning. So we've had a lot of news come from that meeting there. So obviously working in partnership is just a great thing for us because it means we're able to share ideas, we share resources. And um, in the example um, in front of you, we're able to share infographics as well. So there's one there about what happens to recycling, which is one of the questions that we get asked quite a lot from residents who want to be sure that the recycling material they give to us is actually recycled and where it actually goes as well. Um, next slide, please. So we've talked about the adopt an area scheme. So um, the central picture there is Jasmine. She was our first adopt an area volunteer and I was able to go out and drop her kit off myself. So I was able to um, give her the inside track on, on everything. And I know um, her daughter there was super excited to get started. And a lot of the other people we've been speaking to have been families, they've been dog walkers, they've been various people who are just really keen 
on going out, keeping their area tidy. Um, I know we mentioned around 60. We've had 174 people contact us and ask to adopt their area across both districts. And we've also been able to provide kits to um, parishes as part of our purchase of them. So we've been able to get parishes kits at a minimal cost to them as well. So in terms of coverage for the district, there is a lot of people out there with litter pickers, a lot of people collecting litter. Fortunately, there's still people dropping it, but that's where other campaigns will come in um, seasonally as well in order to try and encourage people to take their litter home. Um, one of the other first opportunities we had to actually get out and about was the Clean Up Jackman's Day, which I know um, uh, some of some of you might have been part of. Um, so it was a great opportunity. We had the refuse fader in the school playground. We also had a sweeper in the playground and the kids were able to walk around and ask lots of questions about the vehicles there. And then we took them out for a litter pick. Letchworth Green Day. Um, I know Diane's here, absolutely fantastic event. And that was one of the other first opportunities we had to actually engage with the public. Um, I think we gave out over 400 caddy liners uh, packs of caddy liners on that day and it gave us an opportunity to talk about the um, tree trees that have been given away and all the other initiatives that we've got coming up and it for me it was just such a great event that I was able to get out and speak to people again and I think that's one of the things that I've really missed in terms of communications and engagement it's not all social media it's actually going out and, and speaking to people and the Great British Spring Clean um, kind of turned into a long um, long period of time for us because we had people changing days and we were able to be flexible on that because obviously things cropped up which meant that people weren't necessarily able to do their scheduled events so it went on for quite a while um, and to honour that we've made some little badges that we were able to give out to some of our volunteers as well just to commemorate the fact that they were part of that Great British Spring Clean. Um, in terms of other social media around littering partnering with Creek Britain Tidy obviously a nationally recognised campaign there as well, where they, they're obviously developing messages that we can utilise as a council. And we've got Andy there in the um, bottom left-hand corner, who was is one of our street cleansers in Bulldog, although he's retiring imminently, I've been advised. So Andy, Andy's going to be a, a lost ball, but Bulldog, I'm afraid. Um, but we had a great response to the post that we put out about him, thanking him and thanking Cruz as well. Um, so... I think it was actually a challenge from Chloe. She wanted to make sure that we had some positive messages for people. And um, we just wanted to, to pick someone who I think, you know, symbolises the work that can be done in the district to keep it clean as well. Um, next slide, please. So our WE event feels like it wasn't that long ago, to be honest. It was a very long day. It was a very popular day. It feels like we collected more than 10 and a half tonnes. I know I certainly felt like I, at the end of it, moved probably 10 tonne of that myself. Um, very, very popular day. So one of the pictures there you can see is just a very small sample of the amount of hoovers that we had come through the day. There was easily over 100, but there was probably just as many printers, TVs, um, lots of different things. Personally, one of the things that struck me on the event was um, the amount of packaging that people brought along, which is absolutely fine. But the thing that I found most difficult was I was unboxing brand new BT hubs. So still in the, the packaging. So someone's obviously had that, not even come out of the packaging. So for us, what did it tell us? It told us that we need to give people more advice about disposing of these things before they need to get to a wee event. So for example, with the BT, Virgin Media Boxes, we are preparing um, social media posts advising people, you can go back to BTE. Virgin Media want their kit back because they will take it and they will recycle it themselves. Also, um, giving people advice on how to recycle batteries, we've got a curbside battery collection service. So on the day, we had a big drum of people bringing batteries along. Obviously, they can go through the curbside. Repairing. If you look at some of the hooves there, and I don't want to name a brand name, but I can see one there. The particular brand, you can buy almost any component component of that hoover online. So 
it, it just goes to show that even if you haven't got a local repair option, and there are lots and lots of local repair options, you can get replacements online quite happily for some of these machines that probably cost people hundreds of pounds. So for us, I think it was a learning curve in that we can do more to prevent these items becoming waste in the first place. Obviously, promoting repair, promoting reuse, could someone else use it, promoting charity shops and also disposal advice. You don't need to wait for a wee event. And I think people maybe were hesitant about going to the recycling centre. Um, so it's just making sure that they understand that actually the recycling centre will recycle it in the same way that we can as well. Um, and one of the things that I found out from Waste Aware today is that um, HCC have managed to get some funding for pack testing. So some of the electrical items going through the um, recycling centres, they're going to be able to pack test, hopefully for reuse as well. So as, as that information becomes aware, I'm sure it will help um, count, uh, County Council promote that as well to our, our residents, because I think that's very important for um, residents to appreciate that these items don't have to have an end life if they've still got life in them. Um, next slide, please. And Chloe, I'm going to hand back to you. Yes, yeah, so very quickly, just going to touch on the Master Composter campaign. Um, again, conscious that some of you in the room are actively involved in this. Um, so in May of last year, or this year rather, uh, Garden Organic was commissioned by East Hearts Council to um, recruit and train some volunteers to give advice on home composting and food waste reduction, specifically linked, of course, to their service change to a charged garden waste service where they don't currently have a, a separate food waste uh, collection like us. We were very fortunate, obviously, being part of a shared service that we were able to tag along, um, you know, with, with that piece of work uh, in exchange for a, a bit of additional waste awareness, officer time and support on, uh, you know, on comms for their, their uh, services. Um, and, you know, really pleased we've, we've just had our sort of update on, on how the sort of essentially first quarter's gone. And we've had, um, you know, 42.5 volunteer hours so far. We've had a number of Zoom talks, um, uh, volunteers attending uh, public events. So you can see Jane in the picture there who, who went with Rob um, and attended the, um, the Green Festival in Letchworth. Um, and of course, we're still looking for volunteers. Uh, and one of the things that we'll be looking at, you know, as, as we uh, move towards spring of course is promoting much more home composting because although we do offer offer garden waste service um home cost bleh, home composting is still a much better solution and it is something you know we want to encourage people to compost at home and then use that compost obviously in their own gardens and the like so we're keen to continue to promote that promote that and look at what legacy we can have from this master composter program um, to, to, to move that campaign work uh, forwards going on in the future. Next slide, please. And that sort of brings me nicely on to Waste Warriors. So when we were looking uh, at commissioning master composters, we knew we needed another outlet to reach residents because um, the corporate Facebook pages doesn't provide um, you know, individual uh, services and teams the opportunity to necessarily say everything that they want to say. Um, and we knew that if we wanted to recruit volunteers, um, we needed somewhere else where conversations could be had because obviously at the moment on the, on the corporate pages, um, you know, we, we push out messages, but we don't have that ability to, to have a conversation about whether something is good or bad or, you know, uh, or, or whether or, or not there's something exciting going on down the road. Um, so Waste Warriors was formed. It's a, a group on Facebook, so it obviously has slightly different uh, sort of look and feel from, from the corporate pages. And we've deliberately kept it non-council, if that makes sense. We try not to talk too much about our services. Obviously, they do crop up from time to time. And our focus are, in terms of the, uh, of the Facebook group is very much on our waste prevention, waste minimization um, uh, messages that we want to get out, giving people ideas, um, you know, looking at reuse options, sharing stuff that we've seen in the supermarkets or, you know, apps or ideas. And, and this is a good uh, example of a post from Louise where she's tested out um, the Too Good To Go app 
um, and uh, you know successfully <laughs> uh, come up trumps with um, uh, you know food some food rescue. Um, there's obviously a number of other apps out there which we've talked about, and it's an opportunity for residents to potentially also ask us questions that they don't know the answers to. We can go away, do a bit of digging, and hopefully provide some sort of answer. There are other obviously. Uh, Facebook groups out there that do that but one of the reasons we wanted to, to have our own was because I know being part of a lot of these social media groups that there's a lot of greenwashing that goes on and there's a lot of incorrect messaging so it gives us an opportunity to allow conversations to be had to chip in when we can add value but also to check commentary that's not necessarily factually correct um, and make sure that that we're keeping those messages positive um, and, and spreading you know different ideas uh, around we've got 350 odd members since may and uh, you know it's a great opportunity for us to uh, get our messages shared a bit wider so a lot of the messages and, and uh, residents who are part of that group will share stuff we post amongst their friends and so on and so forth so we have a much wider reach reach than um, potentially we do get on the on the corporate pages. Um, next slide, please. So that kind of brings me on to how you can help. Um, so all of you will know and have probably have heard me say before that uh, liking, sharing, commenting on our posts and not just wastes posts, but uh, the post that the council does is extremely important in getting the message out there. So this first one here that you can see with the seven likes circled, that's a post from the corporate page. Um, but what I can tell you is um, another one, it's a slightly different post, but the one below, um, it's liked by uh, seven people, you know, Drew, Jenny, uh, and five others. Drew and Jenny work for me. I can tell you that two of those others, one was me, one was Louise. You know, we are all, committed to this we are all keen to promote this stuff what we need is other people to like and share our posts um, not just people who work in the waste team um, so I wanted to use this on the right hand side you can see here that this is an example of one of the poach posts that reached a lot more people so this post reached 525 people it was only liked by three people but there were five shares and shares are massive when it comes to engagement um, we had 26 people click on the links and uh, we had 12 comments where people were asking questions on that particular post. And as I say, it's this opportunity to engage and find out information. So if I could just have one more click, please. This next one is, the, is another one. You, somebody on the screen will recognise this individual in the picture. Um, <laughs> um, and this is a really good example of, um, you know, where councillors actually are engaging in our Waste Warriors page. Um, lovely example here of Evelyn uh, using her litter picker. Um, and you'll see uh, from the little insight at the bottom that that, that reached 172 people, um, you know, through likes, shares um, and engagements. And, and so really positive steps going on with Waste Warriors. But we are obviously all on that Facebook group because we care already. The key thing is sharing those messages wider and getting um getting an even an even bigger reach andy um andy's post as louise mentioned earlier is still uh, still probably our best achieving post that isn't about service disruption and, and as louise mentioned you know she i set this challenge that i wanted us to get some high reach positive messages out there uh, as i say because at the moment most of the high reach messages that go out from us are about service disruption um, so uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, and then I'll just hand back to Louise, who's going to talk to you a little bit about what, what we're doing coming up. Thank you. Um, so top of the list is going to be uh, a change in a, our advice on wrapping paper disposal. So historically, we've said no to wrapping paper just because of the sheer volume of embellishments of plastic coating that meant it was too difficult to distinguish between recyclable and non-recyclable wrapping paper. Now, us as a, a service, along with um, the likes of, say, Sainsbury's and Wilco, need, are moving on. So those two examples of shopping centres are now having Christmas wrapping paper that's based on the brown paper style. 
they've done away with the plastic sleeving and they've got a small paper tab around it. So my, my, my question to the team before we launched this was, if they're moving on, so should we. Wrapping paper messages have always been difficult, but difficult doesn't mean we shouldn't do it. So beginning tomorrow, um, my task will be coming up with um, some very clear, informative messages on how wrapping paper can be disposed of this year through the black bin service. So the, the reason for that, obviously, is a lot of people use wrapping paper. There are alternatives to wrapping paper, which we'll also be promoting. So um, again, I've got another prop. I don't know if anyone's ever seen anything like this. This is reusable wrapping paper that is designed, I don't know if you can hear it, to be crinkly. And then I've got an example here as well. And I apologize because I am super small on your screen, but this is what we don't want, which is paper that's been coated, I don't know if you shiny there, that's been coated in a layer of plastic foil. It looks pretty, but that's the sort of thing we are going to try and encourage people not to use this year and to opt for paper that we can recycle as well. So that's something that we're going to be doing very rapidly um, and hoping that that enables us to capture more paper this year, as well as encourage people to think of alternatives. So, and I can never pronounce this, so I apologize. Fukushima or Fukushima, I, I apologies if that sounds like a swear word, but essentially it's wrapping presents in material. Um, so we're going to be trying to encourage people to think about that as well. Continuing with seasonal messages. So the Waste Aware team have come up with messages for every single day of the 24 days towards Christmas. Um, they've also come up with messages towards the end of November as well, the first of which being available tomorrow. They've also developed um, a digital leaflet for us to be able to share with residents tips and tricks on avoiding waste at Christmas time. I've not seen sight of that yet, so I'm hopeful that it is everything they've, they've promised it's going to be. Um, I mentioned Real Nappies earlier. So one of the things with Real Nappies as well, the companies that have signed up to the new nappy scheme have also um, pledged that they will help support us in events so i'm hoping we can do some face-to-face -face events or webinars actually explaining to people how real nappies work and trying to just take the, the the unknown out of that so we will be partnering with actual companies who develop and sell the nappies to our, our residents as well so that'll be something i look forward to doing now we can do more face-to-face a lot more information on littering, anti-littering, adopt an area, um, littering groups, and also developments with the recycling bins. So hoping to get more recycling bins out in the district and encourage people to use them correctly. Mm -hmm. Having a recycling bin on a high street doesn't mean that people use it properly. And obviously that's something we need to make sure happens as well. And I think, as I said before, times are moving on. People expect to see recycling facilities now out and about. Um, one of the major, major topics for next year for Waste Aware for sure, and I know Chloe's mentioned it in terms of the trial, the trial there is avoidable food waste. So when we talk about avoidable food waste, for me instantly, I think of the salad left in the plastic bag because unfortunately salad does, um, obviously pre-cut salad does um, just waste that much quicker than, than other salad. And it does seem to be the example that our waste analysis people, when they go through our bins, tend to give us in terms of avoidable food waste. Tomatoes as well, they, they, when they get a little bit soft, people then decide they don't want to use them. So it's, it's going to be our task then, along with um, county council colleagues and waste aware colleagues, to come up with messages to try and avoid avoidable food waste. Home composting, again, another, another topic. As much as we like to promote the garden waste service, and I personally have a lot to do with the garden waste service when that rolls out, obviously home composting is so much better for the environment and residents then can actually reap the benefit of that material and, and complete that, that circle in terms of keeping those nutrients within their their gardens within their um, allotments. So uh, I don't think I'm alone in promoting home composting. And I know that um, some people have been on the um, home composting course. I know I've learned a lot from 
from um, Rob, our master composter. So I'm excited to get out and start sharing that information. Although I don't have a home composter, so I might have to um, borrow someone's. And then paper campaign. So this is slightly different to our advice on wrapping paper. Essentially, we are looking to divert the paper that we know is in the residual bins, so in the purple bins, which is um, from the waste analysis that was done in January, could be anywhere up to 17% of that residual waste being paper. Of that, between 24 and 58% of that could have been happily recycled. So the, the message for us is getting paper from the purple residual bins into paper boxes, because ultimately, if it goes into the paper box, it is worth so much more environmentally, financially for us as an authority, the paper is worth more, and cutting down the waste that then goes to landfill. And finally, um, the, the graphic there is a little snippet from this year's Christmas hanger. Um, love them or loathe them. Um, this year, we have sent some messages to residents thanking them for their patience and understanding. As you're aware, um, very much so, we've, we have had challenges in our collection services. So it's thanking residents for their patience, but also extending that thanks to our crews as well, who have worked hard during some very difficult times. So it's just acknowledging their contribution there. And then we go on, and I, I've not, I've deliberately not put the whole hanger in because I don't want complete spoilers, um, but then we go on just to, to challenge people with reducing their waste in 2022. And next slide, please. And I think that opens up to questions. Okay, thanks very much. That's a uh... A very comprehensive tour around everything that you're doing and planning to do. Uh, the first time I saw was Amy. Amy. Hi, yeah. Um, I just wanted to say that the, um, that was the longest school run home ever with Evelyn. She was incredibly proud of herself by the time we got home. Huge bag of rubbish that um, we managed to sort out. She was very, very impressed with herself. Um, also, with regards yeah. to the wrapping paper, I've got to begin to tell you how delighted I was to see just no glitter. There was, no, there was none of the wrapping paper was slathered in glitter. And uh, that was just like, that was just a great sight to see. Um, yes, that was it really. But I'm going to, I want other people to be able to um, ask questions on this. So I'm just going to shift now. Okay, John is next. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah. Oh, good. A uh, couple of questions. Uh, firstly, about we. Um, I was trying to work out whether taking items to a wee collection is exactly the same thing as taking them to a household waste recycling centre and putting them in the right bin. And in the presentation, um, it was suggested that there was some relationship between these, but I didn't really understand. Okay, I think we'll, we'll do a batch of questions and you come back and answer all of them. I think that would be best. Okay, to be, uh, next, happy, next, happy yep. next question. Uh, uh, welcome, I very much welcome Waste Warriors, and I've just been, been catching up on it now that I know what it is. So thanks for that mention um, and liking things very much. Uh, is there an opportunity for businesses that work away quietly in the background, doing the right sorts of things, to be. Um, promoted, recognised, acknowledged in a directory somewhere. I'm thinking of the likes of, of SIBA on the Jackman's estate in Letchworth, uh, dealing with um, appliances, uh, second-hand appliances, trading them, um, coming out to repair them, that kind of thing, um, which, and also handling, uh, I don't know, uh, slightly damaged but functional um, uh, electrical goods, uh, within a limited range, but they know what they're doing. And I imagine that there are others in the other towns across North and East Hearts um, and, and, and not much recognised. They wouldn't necessarily want to be even more run off their feet, um, but at least it'd be encouraging for, for members of the public to know about them. Those are my okay. two Interesting topics. Interesting question. Thanks. Christine. Sorry. Thank you. 
Um, I wanted to ask about this wrapping paper advice, uh, Louise, would it be going out on the bins as well? Because that's obviously the, to me, that's going to be the most important place. Is that going to be in your uh, bins as well as just on social media and things? Because a lot of people don't do social, social media, do they? And um, the other thing was just to say that my daughter managed to get a mini litter picker for her like five-year-old um, and um, it's also I think it's even made from waste materials so that's got all sorts of good things about it so if you want I can send you that information she hasn't had it a day uh, the, both children have got one them now two and a half year old and the uh, five and a half year old and uh, they're thrilled with them, but, uh, and I've sent the information to one of my local primary schools, but I don't think they've got them yet. So we haven't tried them for very long, but I could send you that information if you wanted, because I think that could be very good for um, helping the kids get into it. Perfect. Go ahead. Um, yes, I've got, thank you. I've got several questions. First of all, um, I'm going to refer to one that John brought up a minute ago about uh, recognising good businesses on the website, um, like repairers. Um, was it Seba, is it, on, on the Jackmans? Um, because I was also thinking, would it be possible, because uh, Plastic Free um, North Hearts uh, isn't really mentioned on the council website, much at all would it be best good would it be possible to have um a page about plastic free north hearts and include um things that are happening in the various districts uh, like we've got a lecture with one a hitching one a um, royston one and a bulldog one more or less um and also perhaps mentioning on that page um giving a shout out to the local businesses who have become plastic free champions because they have made some sacrifices to do that and it would be nice to give them a bit of a shout out i mean and um at the same time this connects with uh facebook I, that's the only social media i do um i don't have a, a smartphone so i only do social media um facebook but Plastic Free Letchworth has had a Facebook page for a couple of years now. Um, can we connect that with um, all the other plastic free communities and North Hearts in general? I just feel that there's a bit of a disconnect between Plastic Free North Hearts, the council run, and the other groups. Okay. I, know we get, I know we have meetings a couple of times a year, and I know we do talk to each other, but somehow or other I feel as though we're not quite there yet. With, with connecting. Look, the example of the Waste Warriors was a good one because, um, because of their Facebook page. I am I have trained as a Waste Warrior, so because of, of, of their Facebook page, I feel connected with that and I can share their posts and I can add to their posts and I feel as though that is working as a sharing okay. of ideas. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I might yeah. explain myself. Yeah, I think they did. Okay, thanks so much, Diane. Uh, Val. My question is about pat testing. I'm really pleased to see that finances have been found for pat testing. Uh, before the pandemic, it must have been two years ago, I went to the um, Hitching uh, Repair Cafe, which is starting up, and local charity shops who they couldn't you couldn't actually sell electrical goods because they just simply could not get hold of a pat tester who'd been trained and they couldn't have to find the finances. My question is, who, which organisations will be allowed to use these pat testers? Thank you. OK, thanks very much for all those questions. Uh, Chloe and I'm Dora Louise. Right, I am going to try and run through from where we started and so okay. apologies if I miss anything do pick me up on it if I do so I think the first question that was asked was about is uh, we that's taken to our events the same as taking it to a recycling centre yes is the short answer which is one of the reasons why we want to try and do things differently next time you know if people are thinking 
that it comes to us because we're going to reuse it we need to change that message. I mean, obviously the posters all say recycling, um, but yes, anything that goes to the Household Waste Recycling Centre is recycled. Um, anything that comes to us is recycled. The difference is that if it goes to the Household Waste Recycling Centre, the county council pay for it. If it comes to us, we pay for it. Um, one of the things that, that, as Louise has already mentioned and linked to the last question around PAT testing, is because the Household Waste um, centres are being developed and some of those now have reuse centres so they're, they're just about to open one at where I think that's got a reuse centre that's where the pass testing will be done so it will mean that um, you know stuff that can be reused will be captured before it gets in one of those recycling skips um, it will if it's electrical it will be pat tested and then obviously um, it will be, be put in the reuse shop um, so we'll be diverting that material from recycling streams into reuse streams um, I say we, county council, I should say. Um, so can businesses be promoted on the Waste Warriors um, page? What we, we say no commercial advertising um, because we don't want to get into the realms of uh, greenwashing issues and uh, challenging businesses you think they're doing the right thing that maybe aren't. But what I would say is absolutely, if you as a resident or you as a councillor um, or you as a campaigner sees something that's being done by, an, by a business or a charity, then tell people about it. You know, um, uh, Louise posted about some wrapping paper that she'd seen in Sainsbury's great stuff because it's sharing good messages. So what I would say is we don't encourage direct promotion by those businesses, but by all means, if you as a resident has used that business and had a fab service, promote it. Um, you know, and uh, one example of that, that that perhaps I should do is um, I used a company called eSpares to repair my washing machine. Um, and, and it's a great example of people, you know, a few years ago, I wouldn't thought I could repair my washing machine myself. But, you know, I'm quite proud of the fact that I did uh, repair the door. Um, and it was actually simple, easy. They've got online videos, etc. So that's a really good example of sharing business information without direct promotion from the business itself um, and linked of course to recognizing businesses on the websites that's really a corporate question that we need to put to corporate comms team and the web team it's not something I can answer but I will of course take that back um, the wrapping paper advice it isn't going to be on the bins that's partly because we've had to have uh, some conversations with our um, contractors our processing contractors both the paper box um, you know, our separated paper and our MRF um, facility to make sure that they can handle potentially additional quantity, but also what will happen, of course, if we get the wrong kind of wrapping paper in there. So this year, it's relatively low key promotion on social media. Obviously, if that doesn't cause us any issues with contamination, we will then go one step further next year. So it's a bit of a trial this year and not, not every district will be doing it. Um, and then in terms of, oh, just one comment, really, in terms of the mini litter picker um, that you mentioned, that is an absolutely great example of something to share on the Waste Warriors page with, uh, with people because there'll be plenty of other people out there who might think, oh, yes, brilliant, I'd love a mini litter picker. And I'm one of those indeed. So. Um, you know, in terms of the, um, yeah, the, the plastic free uh, stuff, as I say, I will take that back to the corporate comms team about, you know, what we might be able to do a lot of it's about um you know officer resource and who's going to maintain those pages etc cetera, etc cetera, because obviously information does change um but i'll take that question back um and, and provide ruben with uh, with an update for a future meeting anything i missed okay is that i think that covered everything I, i'm conscious of the the time and we've still got two more people to speak to us so i think we'll move on now um and the next person who's going to speak to us is Chris Lee from Royston Repair Cafe, uh, who I guess, uh, you know, there's some, some links from what we've been talking about in, in, in terms of some of the Wii events, perhaps, and, and what can be done to reuse things. So, Chris, over to you. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, yes, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I think the subtitle for this particular little presentation is borrowing good ideas from other people, uh, because particularly when it comes to environmental things, um, I just believe in borrowing and reusing 
and recycling other people's good ideas um, to learn from their mistakes. Um, so everything I'm talking about uh, this evening is basically an idea that's been borrowed from somewhere else, some of which we've already put into practice in uh, Royston, some of which we may put into practice in future. Um, and one of the things I did a couple of years ago was to set up, um, uh, a sort of, well, no, nothing more really than a hashtag um, called Reduce, uh, Royston Reducing Waste, uh, which is an umbrella that anybody can shelter under in terms of waste management initiatives um, in the area. Um, and, it, and it's sort of because I believe that doing things together, we can do more. Um, but I, I'm not particularly in favour of um, formal structures. So it's more sort of um, trying to join things up more informally rather than having um, a big bureaucracy um, that uh, can take up a lot of time and effort uh, and maybe um, distracts us from getting on uh, with the business. Um, <clears throat> uh, and obviously that's very much about one initiative complementing another. Uh, rather than duplicating effort. Um, what I briefly wanted to outline uh, was things that I already know about that happen under this broad Royston Reducing Waste banner, um, then outline a couple of initiatives, again borrowed from other places, that might be added, not necessarily by me, but might be added to what we do in Royston, um, and then finally very briefly conclude with a vision um, borrowed from somewhere else um, about what success might look like. Um, so currently uh, what's happening in Royston, um, this things that spring out of my own personal interests. Um, I discovered men's sheds, which I'm very involved in uh, nationally and was involved in down in Hemel Hempstead. Um, I discovered men's sheds and repair cafes on Twitter uh, in the same week in 2012. Um, and this resulted uh, in me setting up the repair shed down in Hemel um, and the Royston Repair Cafe, um, both in 2014. And I'm pleased to say that both are still thriving. Um, so they didn't just sort of grow and then uh, fade. Um, I'm still a trustee with the UK Men's Sheds Association. Um, and certainly I'm doing whatever I can to support the creation of men's sheds around the county. Um, and most men's sheds are about making, mending and learning, uh, which are three of my particular passions. Um, on the making side in Royston, um, I set up something called Green and Grey, uh, which is basically using reclaimed materials, uh, primar primarily pallet wood and bike parts uh, for making one-off items uh, for homes and gardens. Uh, I have to say that it's primarily presents I make for friends and family. Um, on the mending side, obviously, the main item is, is setting up the Royston Repair Cafe, which I co-founded in 2014. Um, we put on four events a year, um, and we've organised 25 to date, the last being in uh, mid-October. <clears throat> we also did recently our first community repair <laughs> which was at the uh, Royston Community Garden, um, salvaging a picnic bench out of three which were um, sitting there uh, rotting. Um, and I'm pleased to say that the Royston Repair Cafe has inspired other places to start repair cafes, most notably um, in and around Cambridge. Um, and there's one, there's a, um, a Cottenham uh, Repair Cafe next Saturday on the 20th of November. And then, as hopefully you all know, there's a Hitchin. The next Hitchin Repair Cafe is happening on Saturday, uh, the 27th of November. Um, I'm also interested in, in sharing as a way to obviously reduce consumption um, and was one of the co-founders of the Royston Free Cycle Group, which we co-founded back in 2003. Um, and we had to close it uh, a couple of years ago for technical reasons. Uh, when we had about 7,000 members. Um, and of course, things like Royston Friegel is doing much the same thing now. Um, and then obviously there are Facebook pages for sharing items for free. Um, and certain amount in Royston is going on on the next door uh, platform, community platform. Um, 
in Royston, we're very, very lucky to have one of the few retail outlets for um, a business called iFixit. Um, and that's the high end of the high tech end of the repair spectrum. So they deal primarily in repairing phones and iPads and, uh, and laptops. Um, and they used to attend the repair cafe in Royston to give free advice and minor fixes. Um, and for them, it's certainly very important is something um, somebody was mentioning earlier today, which is the right to repair, which is a national campaign. Well, it's an international campaign uh, to change legislation. So it makes it legal for uh, repairers, professional repairers even, uh, to mend um, items, particularly things like phones and iPads. Um, so that's an ongoing campaign, which has had some success. And at the moment in the UK doesn't cover the full range of um, electrical equipment. Um, also, people should know in connection with iFixit that there's a brilliant, brilliant online repair manual um, at ifixit.com, uh, which has um, advice about how to repair thousands of items, including lots of different models of uh, mobile phones. Um, in terms of what else is going on under the umbrella of reducing waste in Royston, two repair cafe volunteers from the very beginning uh, have now set up businesses which relate to um, reducing consumption and such like. One is somebody who runs a thing in Bassingbourne called Homemade at the Barn, uh, which celebrates handmade crafted items, which may be retro items, uh, maybe items that have been recycled, upcycled, repurposed. Um, and all, all this is about keeping lovely items in use for longer. Um, another volunteer has set up something called um, Anahata, which is body care project, uh, products, uh, which are sold at um, craft fairs um, and are, have no um, plastic packaging and are kind to the environment as well as the people using them. Um, also in Royston, we have a thing, a business, uh, and it's um, uh, called Heart to Earth, and it's few doors down from I Fix It in the centre of Royston. Um, and they are basically all about supplying unwrapped food items. So somebody mentioned it earlier, the idea that you bring along your own containers for filling and refilling um, with wholesome projects that are good for your body and the natural world. Um, we've also mentioned earlier Plastic Free Royston or Plastic Free Royston, which uh, again is trying to encourage businesses uh, to avoid using single, single uh, use plastic. And that's part of um, an umbrella group you probably know about called uh, Royston, the Royston Environmental Group, um, which and I think it's all very important for engaging and rewarding businesses and acknowledging what they're doing to encourage more businesses to get on board. Um, the new kid on the block in Royston is something called Tent Share, uh, which I think brilliantly they call Open Air b, &B um, which is basically a, a platform where people who've got um, tents that they're happy to hire out to other people, we'll post them up there. And campers without tents can look to hire a tent, so it saves them the cost of buying one. Um, uh, they're also branching out into um, uh, mending, uh, repairing tents, um, and also um, they, are, they have a tie-up with a, another business that repurposes tents to make um, other items like bags and such like. So briefly moving on to new possibilities for Royston, and I'm sort of listing them in an order which is the easiest first. Um, a lot of repair cafes branch out into having Skillshare sessions. So that would be teaching people how to sew on buttons, how to mend, your, mend, up, mend punctures, maybe how to change a plug, or even how to put up a shelf on a wall. Um, and um, it, it's an extension of the, the, the basic idea behind uh, repair cafes, which the, is that the owners learn more about the products they've got, and maybe they consider diagnosing and fixing the problems themselves if they become more um, more uh, confident. And Skillshare sessions, sessions uh, that I know about already happen in Cambridge um, and in London at a place called the Good Life Centre, which is well worth a visit if anybody goes there. Um, the other thing that happens in uh, attached to often to repair cafes. Um, is a thing called a swish, which is a clothing exchange, obviously, which is a fight back against fast fashion. Um, and I know that's happening in other parts of North Hearts, uh, as well as in Cambridge. 
Um, things that I'm interested in, I don't know, there's a statistic which is the average electric drill is only used for 33, 13 minutes of its life. Um, so the idea of setting up libraries of things and, li and tool libraries to share what's already available rather than think that everybody has to have one uh, for themselves. Um, a community fridge. Uh, this is basically to reduce food waste. Uh, I've seen one that works very well down in Froome. Um, and um, clearly it's a possibility for lots of different communities. Um, in Royston, we have two unused public toilets. Um, so I'm interested in the idea, following the example of Hitchin and the Hitchin hack space, um, is, which is where they have their repair cafes, I'm interested in what uh, might be possible in turning these public toilets into something else. Could be a community fridge, could be a repair kiosk, could it be a drop-off and collection point for a sharing library? Anything like that might be possible. Um, very briefly, my vision for the future comes from Glasgow, uh, where they have something called the Remade Network. Um, and there's a very good impact report they produced um, to demonstrate a model for a citywide uh, repair economy. Um, up in Glasgow there, they're only three years old. They've got nine full-time staff and 80% of their income is earned income. So it's financially sustainable. And they have very good partnerships between public, private, and not for private so sector um, organizations. And the main objectives of the Remade Network, which we could replicate in other places, is affordable repair services, quality refurbished goods at a price people can afford, convenient recycling points for electric waste, education in repair skills, and training in repair for new green jobs. Um, and I think it's, um, you know, it's, it, it's a wonderful example <clears throat> of what they've achieved even in just three years. Um, and as I say, it's financially sustainable. So uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry for that rush through everything. Well, thanks, Chris. That was some really interesting things in there. Uh, we've got Rebecca with Tent, uh, from Tentshare with us. As soon as you mentioned Tentshare, I wonder if we get Rebecca just to add in as she wants to, and then we'll deal with questions for both of you. Rebecca. <clears throat> Uh, hello. Yeah, thank you for having me here. Lovely to see you all. Um, Chris, you pretty much summarised Tentshare in a, in a, in a fairly uh, spectacular way. So thank you for that. Some people take ages to understand the concept and you've uh, got it straight away. So Tentshare is a community led tent matching service. Um, I really want it to roll out in Royston first and then it could go UK wide. Um, it already is UK wide, but um, I'd love it to really dig into being UK wide. I'm really committed to reducing tent waste. 250,000 tents went into landfill in 2018 and camping has increased 500 percent over the uh, lockdown. So there is a big tent waste issue. Um, so there's two arms of the tent share. Um, and, and more but uh, there's two arms there's the family camping so you can as Chris said you can put the tents onto the website and rent and rent it out and earn money for keeping wealth local um, and then you can um, uh, rent a tent from somebody local to you <clears throat> so it's keeping um, uh, there's you know with car carbon reduction uh, there's a thing use intensity so the more you use an item the lower the carbon is um, you know, so uh, we, we I, in fact, um, oh, and then the other arm is that we um, trialed this year renting salvage tents to festival goers at Medicine Festival. Um, and we managed to rent out uh, quite a number of those. And um, I can't remember what saving. I think we made a saving of something like uh, the equivalent of uh 10 return trips to Madrid and that was just me working on my own in the last three weeks leading up to the festival um you know labor of one <laughs> so imagine what we could do if we could roll it out even bigger um I work in a cooperative with Camp Light who do the same thing but they pitch uh, instead of self I, I offer a self-pitch service they pitch for you but they're all salvage tents all cleaned up mended and I've got um I've been on a two-day uh, tent repair course uh, so I'm a tent mechanic <laughs> if, if you ever heard of such a thing and um, so I, I'm really happy to attend the repair cafes etc teach people join the sessions 
Um, I'd love to do I'd love to do skill search, share sessions, teaching people how to repair their own tents, keeping them out of landfill, reducing the waste, uh, lowering our carbon. Um, and uh, yeah, all the good things. Uh, oh, share sheds. Love your idea, Chris. Um, love the idea of a share shed, maybe a share loo um, where you can go and access uh, high quality items to do your garden fix your items all of that um, i'm massively into the sharing economy my model is the sharing economy um, peer-to-peer sharing economy business model um, i just attended the sharing economy global summit absolutely incredible ideas and such like uh, did a presentation about triple bottom line introducing the triple bottom line in business so planet first people and then profit at the bottom um, use tent share as a as an example anyway i could chat on about this all day please do ask me anything i'm happy to talk about any of those things that i've talked about in more in depth if anyone's interested okay there's some really interesting things there it reminds me i've had a tent contributing by lock insulation for the last 20 years but doing nothing else exactly um, that get it out get it on the tent show website please <laughs> um, and and um the, the, the chris you covered a lot of uh, a lot of interesting stuff I and mean, i think uh, one of the problems is that that people have become uh, to the view that they can't repair things when often they can be shown how to do that uh, and if they can't there's someone else who can do it so some really interesting things there and uh, some things that um, i think you know, they're not things the council can do but there are things that the council can help people make aware of but uh, Chloe, you have your hand up. Hello again. And yeah, exactly on that note, um, you know, I know that both Chris, you and Rebecca have both, um, you know, shared stuff on Waste Warriors. And I would encourage you to continue to do that. Um, and uh, if you do ever want to talk to us about um, you know, whether or not we can help share information, um, please do contact us at Waste and Recycling at north-hearts.gov.uk um, because we'll obviously engage with you there to see if there's anything we can do and certainly things like uh, tent share you know I've, I've worked at other local authorities I can I can certainly put you in touch with people at other local authorities and things like that which may maybe have helped I'm particularly excited about tent share because I'm an avid camper um, and one of my questions would be whether or not um, you actually have an opportunity for say a wanted because one of the things I've got is I've got um, a tent that I, I want a new inside for because um, I don't really want to get rid of it. But my my daughter likes to wake up at half three, four in the morning and I'd love a black lining <laughs> for my tent. But and I know they exist, but my version just doesn't have it. And so I'd, I'd love that, you know, to explore that opportunity for wanted, um, you know, in your, or, you know, or in your tent share um, venture. I can certainly share that with the community um for sure okay maybe you need to be in touch directly rather than negotiate yeah, about yeah, this yeah, we'll online. Um, <laughs> okay are there any other questions for chris or rebecca as i said i, I mean i think uh, chris you you raise an interesting point you know about the fact that that there are two council owned buildings that haven't been used for years uh, and i suspect that you know there's a search for the ideal use and what we need to do is to see what the maybe good enough use in the short term might be rather than rather than hang out for the ideal use um, so i'm quite keen that we might explore that and i'll talk to some colleagues about how we might manage to do that um, but i said i think the other thing that we can do is, is to try and improve awareness and i mean there is there's obviously the council obviously has to be careful in terms of commercial organizations in that you know we 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 can't promote one commercial organization at the expense of another that wouldn't be the right thing to do at all i think in terms of voluntary and community organizations that, that kind of that constraint doesn't exist and i think what we can perhaps do is to try and and, and make some of these things that are going on visible to more people i mean i think in terms of the royston repair cafe uh, there's a large percentage of the people in royston have, have, have heard of it even if they've never used it um, but there's probably people who've heard of it who don't know where to find it. Um, and and there, there are many of the other things where what they could do with is some more visibility uh, in order to enable the, 
the, the, the essentially the volunteers who can do these things to contact with the, with the people who need them. So I think that's something that we can, uh, uh, and, and the Waste Aware um, organisation is one way of doing that, but I think there are others that we need to look at as well. Okay, so I think that was a really, really interesting series of presentations. Uh, does anyone have any other points they want to raise at this point? Diane. <clears throat> Yeah, question, please. I don't know who to ask this of. Um, I'm plastic free lecturers have had a, a, a lot of problems with vegware bi and bioplastics, where the um, cafes in particular have uh, abandoned their plastic containers for supposedly 100% recyclable uh, things like vegware, for instance. But there's I, what do you do with it? It's a takeaway. People take it away. They think, oh, look, this is plastic. Let's put it in the grey bin. What happens to it then? Does, does it contaminate the whole bin load? Clary, can you answer that point for us? Uh, I can indeed. Yeah, we unfortunately don't want vegware in our recycling stream at all. It's not recyclable necessarily. Um, sometimes it can be processed through the tetra pack type processing but it's certainly not great for paper and it's not great for cardboard and so it doesn't separate out well in our sorting facility so we don't want it and, and in particular the plastic type vegware the lids and things like that getting into the plastic stream you know uh, the plastic free processes will tell you it's 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 a bad thing now we did do an article in outlook um it was some time ago now um but uh, there was an article in outlook about compostable um packaging because ultimately it can be composted but usually only in a specialist composting industrial composting facility and certainly we don't accept it in the composting facility we use. So Can not I, all industrial composting facilities will um, take it. Um, some of them look remarkably like plastic. For instance, Miss Greenfinger sells um, her, her deli products in little plastic um, containers, which clearly say vegware on them and also say 100% compostable. So please, uh, would it be a good idea to put it on the website on your list of of where do you put certain things for recycling, your A to Z list, where do you put vegware? Because it's clearly labelled as vegware. Yeah, we'll, we'll double check it. If it's not on there already, we'll make sure it's, it it's on not there. on there. No. Okay, but, it, but, it's, but it sounds like one of the things that the plastic free organisations need to do is, is to talk, in, in, when you're talking to businesses, is to make sure they're aware of, of that what they're doing is potentially not very helpful. I know, we do. We have yeah, okay. lots of times. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I think uh, it's just approaching nine o'clock, which is, I think, a, a good time to wrap things up unless anyone else has got anything they want to add. So can I thank uh, thank all our speakers for their, their interesting presentations? And um, I think they've, uh, they've told us a lot about what they're doing uh, and there's a lot of good ideas there. Uh, there's clearly some things the council are doing, there's some things that, that, that groups are doing that we can perhaps help to publicise uh, in, in the ways we've discussed. So uh, thank you very much for participating. Uh, uh, an interesting discussion and I think some clear ideas where we can take some steps forward. So thank you very much and good evening. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, very interesting. Bye.